Hello everyone. Um, yes, I'm Venezuelan. I speak only Spanish. I don't speak Catalan, so I will speak in English. Sorry about that. But and if you can put the image, yes. Yeah, we're we're trying to we're we try to talk about this about this whole thing about Fab Labs and also having a look back to the history how we have facing like different times where everything changed and things that they were related uh, we, that we didn't we didn't think that they were related maybe they would they were I just want to leave the question open so going back <laughs> is there Yeah. <laughs> it's not because I'm Venezuela I'm showing this and saying, yeah, they came a hundred years ago and you know. It's about that in the fifteenth century, not only like a, a new world was discovered, but also the press was invented and also the Renaissance uh, started. So different facts happen at more or less the same time in a margin of then than uh, that uh, century that in that moment changed totally the world as we perceived it. No? Same happened in the, in the let's say in the 18th century, in the 19th century with the appearance of the steam machine and how it led us to the industrial revolution when we know or the first industrial revolution that we know is more or less what we are all actually using today as a means for production. It also helped to develop like the 20th century model of the chain production, and that thanks to Henry Ford, and it was called Fordism. And also around the beginning of, of, of the 20th century was invented the wireless communication, the same moment. Radio frequencies, the first broadcast over the Atlantic was made, and so on. But also, some guys in Germany, they invented the bomb. So they had to respond, and they, they, they think how design and liberal arts, uh, liberal arts would respond to the production means and to the actual model of product of, of the industry that was that was raising in that moment in the world. So again, uh, those are the basis of the world as we know it today, and mainly about the world that we are living today, and we are losing it in our hands, and they reflect the last hundred years now. Well, then, <laughs> more than the last hundred years. So, going back, I'm, I'm going to go to really now, to the last hundred years, sorry about that, where we invented the CNC machines, personal computers, and the internet. Things that, in some point, they were not connected among each other, but they, start, they are starting to be connected more and more and more and more, and also, are we going to connect only among them, but with us as humans? Okay. So, CNC machines. These are the actual industrial machines that were used at the 50s. Uh, it, it, let's say this is not really new. This is in the 50s. They were already making like boats and planes out of computer and medical control machines. And also at the late 70s, let's say the personal computers changed the way we produce and the way we relate to each other. Not, nothing to say about the internet, okay? So what happened in the last 10 years? We had a growing network of partners that actually is these places where these three things for plus people are connected. Computers, personal computers, CNC machines that are con con controlled by these uh, computers, and then the internet to connect people around the world in more than a hundred and uh, more than a hundred publics in more than thirty countries in different parts of the world. Such different as a uh, national India an India in the inner city Boston or in the north of Norway in Afghanistan or here in the Poblado district in Barcelona. But which are what, what are the publics? So basically publics are just places like uh, 
are, are you okay? Today could be 60 square meter spaces with digital uh, fabrication machines, such as laser cutters, 3D printers, milling machines that you can control it from your computer, and you can produce your things locally, and you can share it with others. But also you have a lot of uh, equipment for test and to develop not only objects or, you know, not only, uh, let's say, dead objects like a chair, but actually objects that they could behave and they could react, they could produce interaction. So basically inside Fablas you can produce your own technology. The aim of the project is to bring the end of fabrication to a personal level and it started at the MIT like a, a take a level. The thing is that while if you can produce your own technology and if you have a fab lab, then you can produce the machines of the fab lab. So they become self-replicated units. We are halfway of, of doing that and in, a few, uh, in less than 10 years we will be able to produce a fab lab with another fab lab. So it will become viral. Okay. The next step will be to develop us, let's say the really goal of the project is to develop a Star Trek replicator. It means that we won't need the machines, we will just send bits to the, to the net, I don't know, it will be called the internet, and they will, be, they will become add-ons, okay? So, right now, if you can develop projects in fabrics that comes from uh, just single circuit board that you can program and do things like sense uh, temperature of the room, or you can just make a simple switch or put intelligence into the objects to an entire house that we produce here in Fabla Barcelona uh, two years ago for the solar decathlon competition. A totally self-sufficient house uh, that could produce double of energy that it needs and it's locally produced. And actually the, the files of the, the house you can find them in our wiki, wiki.fabla.bcn.org and if you have access to a Fabla you can produce it as well. So the thing is that we are building this network uh, uh, among all, with all these people around the world. And basically we are developing not only projects, but also educational programs. One of them is the, uh, the Fab Academy program that is basically a distributed education system in which you can take classes from every Fab Lab where you are located in the world. And, and basically you can just follow your assignments for six, for six months and acquire all the mastery and how to use all the technologies and the equipment in the fab lab. And on top of that, to develop projects that will be significant for something that you want to change but you cannot find it in the stores or you cannot find it on the shelf. So we have here an issue, actually. That is, we are finding more and more so much value on the projects that are, the projects that are coming out of the fab academy. This is, uh, let's say, an energy monitoring system at a very low cost, developed by one of the students two years ago. And actually, in some point, these, these projects kind of that are uh, called, let's say, dead. No? We don't have a, we haven't built a system which how we take this to another level and how these projects could become either a research program or they could become projects, a uh, project story. So this is why we launched like a, a very, uh, let's say, initial program in the last fall together with the ICU the Institute, uh, Instituto de Cultura de Barcelona, that actually they supported us to fund four projects uh, for three months to be incubated in the Fab Lab, Fab Lab Barcelona. And basically we will give them the means for people and supporting them to prototype ideas uh, and giving them to reality. One of them was, um, let's say, a set of um, furniture. Another one was, uh, a, let's say, a, a collection of shoes. Another one was a caganer. You know what a caganer is? It's these guys that are sitting. In the, they have this one. This, in the, they are used in the Christmas, uh, in the Christmas in Catalonia. And then we have some people that they were developing like a um, self-sufficient system to put into the facades of the buildings and to grow plants. But we don't we didn't have that much money to develop the, the to become to take these product projects and take them into products. So we went for another options. And this is connected with the with this consume a little bit. Because we take the, the project of the shoes and we actually partner with the with the people that develop it, let's say, and also with Goteo. That Goteo is like a Barcelona-based crowdfunding platform 
but it also has the value that it doesn't only take the projects to be funded, but actually they support projects to be open source. So now we are trying to raise, let's say, the funds for this project uh, of digital fabricated shoes, um, and that actually would be produced in the public, and it will be shipped for the people that will, uh, let's say, will buy them. And they were uh, they were reviewed last week in Wired uh, online, and hopefully will be part of a successful program that we want to run. But it's not only to prototype ideas, but it's also how to just take them to another level. And this could, this could create a new, a total new ecosystem in design, in consumption, and usage of technology. So this takes us all to another, let's say, we did this project of, uh, of the shoes and we said, uh, we need to do something else. We were working for several, let's say, months in a project that we call Smart Citizen. And uh, Fab Lab is located at the Institute for Transcendental of Catalonia where there is a lot of, let's say, discussions about the smart cities around, no? And also it, become, it became a trending topic, trending topic in the last years. But we have seen that the smart city topic has been taken into high technology into the cities, controlled from a central room, and then again, the government has the power to control everything. But how you can think about smart city with stupid people on it? So we really need to flip the, flip the, the, the things and think about, okay, smart cities should be produced by smart citizens. And for that, we actually need platforms to do it. So I'm going to show you a, a, a little video about the platform that we just launched this morning. And it's called Smart Cities. It's a platform based on hardware and software in código abierto for the participation of the citizens and the recollection of data in the city. It allows us to share these data to be able to understand better our environment and be able to act in relation to them. El concepto de Smart Cities introducir una capa tecnológica basada en redes a través de Internet en la ciudad. Una ciudad inteligente necesita plataformas para ciudadanos inteligentes. Y es generar un puente de conexión entre las personas, su ambiente, la tecnología y, y la ciudad. Smart Citizens consta de una placa de sensores que capturan datos ambientales y los transmiten a través de Internet. Y una plataforma que usa los datos subidos de esta placa de sensores nos permite usarlos y compartirlos con nuestros amigos y vecinos. Smart Citizen Kit es una placa basada en la plataforma Arduino. Tiene un cargador solar que permite conectar paneles fotovoltaicos que cargan una batería para que se pueda instalar en cualquier lugar de nuestra casa, parque o plaza. Asimismo, consta de cinco sensores de calidad de aire, sonido, temperatura, humedad relativa y cantidad de luz. Una vez que estos sensores capturan los datos, estos se envían a través de la antena wifi que tiene incorporada a plataformas abiertas como un web para poder almacenarlos y hacerlos públicos si el usuario lo desea. Nuestra primera versión del kit fue hecha con mochila o shield. La versión que queremos hacer en los fondos de esta campaña seguirá siendo basada en Open Hardware y en Arduino, pero constará de una sola placa con todas sus capacidades integradas, además de tener posibilidad de expansión. El Smart Citizen Kit nos conecta directamente con la plataforma online, que nos permite tener múltiples conexiones con herramientas existentes. Nos crea un nuevo usuario sin necesidad de crear una nueva cuenta. En nuestro perfil podremos acceder a datos de nuestros sensores o partidos con vecinos. Al mismo tiempo, documentar avances o experiencias que puedan ser útiles para otras personas. Una vez subida la información de los sensores de la plataforma online, podemos usar los valores ambientales y compartirlos a través de redes sociales y crear mapas personalizados o crear alertas que nos envíen SMS o correos electrónicos cada vez que un valor llega a un la información puede ser utilizada para poder gestionar nuestros espacios de forma comunitaria, obteniendo mapas en tiempo real acerca de la contaminación del aire, la cantidad de ruido o la humedad de un ambiente determinado en la ciudad. Es así como se podrán generar comunidades alrededor de estos datos y tener un sistema de distribuido inteligente producido por personas. Los ordenadores nos permitieron generar contenido digital. Internet nos ha permitido compartir esos contenidos. Hoy en día tenemos de mayor acceso a herramientas para actuar en nuestra realidad. Apoyando este proyecto, ayudarás a que estas herramientas hagan de Barcelona una ciudad de Smart City. So basically, this, this project that we're trying to get funding for is actually to develop a piece of hardware that will be open source and very cheap. That will be Arduino based, so it means that it is supported by a huge community behind it. 
And actually, we allow, we allow to people to create their own information about the city, share it, and use it for something that they think is, is useful, let's say. So, and beyond that, we, we, are wanting to, we wanted to connect or to take this platform to another level, is to think about how people could be productive, productive themselves uh, to their houses. Uh, right now, you can get a 3D printer or a very cheap data fabrication machine and just have a mini lab in your house, and you can just register to this platform and be a source for production in a distributed way. This is basically the link for what's going to happen next year, hopefully, in Barcelona, that this will be the first fab city in the world, in which we are going to start uh, to develop uh, or to deploy a network of fab labs. They will be inside each neighborhood, and it will be platforms for citizen innovation and production. So the idea is that, that we are we shift from the mode from the model that we are right we are right now that is basically the, what some people call the Tito model that is product in trash out. It means that everything that we produce in the city is trash that actually comes from the consumption of things that we import from the other part of the world. And the idea is to switch to another model that would would, would be called Tito that it means data in and data out. So the city is able to produce everything that it needs inside the same city, and basically, actually, the, the even the rubbish and the and, and all the trash is being used again to in the, in the kind of a high-tech permaculture. So this is part of a, of our vision of how things might change. We think we are more or less in the same point again on when Colum discovered Columbus discovered America kind of thing. Um, there is a saying by Bob Mr. Killer that says that it takes 50 years for technology to be truly transformational. And computers were invented like 60 years ago, more or less. Internet was invented more or less like 50 years ago. I think we are running out of time. And thank you very much. <laughs>